a lot of these girls don't come off their oral contraceptives mm. they're on it for years on end and they meet their partners on it that you may otherwise have a difference of preference mm. had you not have met that person when you were on the combined oral contraceptive You may represent security and you may represent a lifestyle which may not be what you want to represent. For example, there's a lot of research I came across by accident recently that shows that women seem to have specifically two preferences in men. They have two different men that they like depending on the time of the month. In normal days, they, in surveys, when they show them different pictures of men or descriptions of men, this is consistently shown over decades women will use will often pick a man who is uh, more masculine seeming like a, a longer beard something like that but less attractive and they'll pick a guy who seem basically more stable somebody who might be a better uh, father figure or a more reliable guy and so on during their ovulation they're much more likely to pick a man who they deem as more attractive and they will specifically note that that more attractive man who's also uh, doesn't have a beard, but more facially masculine, facial masculinization and beard apparently represent different things, but the facial masculinization. So basically they pick the alpha male to have sex with in ovulation. And they specifically say, we don't want a long-term relationship. And they don't pick that guy when they ask in other times of the month. Have you heard of this? Do you know what's yeah? even more interesting than that? And it's exactly in line with that is the difference in female preference of partner when they're on combined oral contraceptives versus off of them it's the oh, wow. equivalent where you have when they're ovulating versus not you have this disparity in what they prefer in terms of alpha versus like a provider slash like somebody who's a stable choice when they're on combined oral contraceptives like uh progestin plus estradiol synthetic to mm. castrate themselves essentially they find their preference in male is different than when they're off of it to a point where it almost the literature almost suggests that because a lot of these girls don't come off their oral contraceptives mm -hmm. they're on it for years on end and they meet their partners on it that you may otherwise have a difference of preference mm -hmm. had you not have met that person when you were on the combined oral contraceptive so it's very interesting where their preference leans far more towards that like that that where does alpha it you preference remember? you get during oh. the ovulation thing it's not you don't have that when you're like manually preventing yourself from having right. your ovulatory cycle right because a lot of girls don't come off and go on the placebo pill or anything they just stay on and never bleed and that's like the whole goal of staying on it all the time so they end up in this like perpetual state of artificially in induced preference of like provider male sort ah, of thing oh, no, they come so off and for because the of the kids, yeah. and then they uh the, their, their preference changes Ooh, it's risky. so uh that's because of the progesterone, right? Because the estrogen peaks during the ovulation. I think the estrogen is the driving one. For I, the alpha. Think, I think it's the progestogenic activity, but also the fact that Ability. your test and free test, your free test levels when you're on these oral contraceptives drops by like 70%. Yeah. So you're mm -hmm. like, you're essentially, you're almost on like a fucking DECA cycle, essentially with no, mm -hmm. with a minimal amount of androgenic activity. So it's like the equivalent of you being like, if you're a hypogonadal guy, your preference of women versus when you're on like, you're on your test levels are at 900. Like you're probably going to be a bit different in terms of how you behave, just like a, whim, a woman will when she has like her, her fucking androgenic activity is dictated by like some microgram quantity of levonorgestrel versus, you know, a full 60 nanogram per deciliter total test level. It's a lot different. Absolutely. And my wife has super yeah. physiological amounts of tests, not from exogenous, but naturally produced. <laughs> yeah. No, so yeah. she she took like birth control for a month and it, it just wrecked her. You know, she became yeah. insecure yeah. and hungry and, and over analyzing things. So we took that out after a month of maybe the first month that we got into a relationship. And then I switched her over to a Paragard, which is an IUD with copper. I think she's on the second one now or third one. And um, yeah, that's infinitely better. I would recommend that for all competitors. I think. What, what, How does that work? Through which uh, is it just a long acting? It, it releases a little bit of copper in the uterus, which then prevents the the egg from nesting. Oh, it, okay. So the egg can get fertilized, but it doesn't nest. And then, of course, you need to take the copper IUD out a couple months before you actually want to get pregnant. Um, not that my fertility is stellar right now, uh, <laughs> but. Um, 
you know, so so that's a, a method of contraceptive, and you don't get any adverse effects from having any additional hormones in your system. So it makes fat loss easier. You don't get this increased hunger, no no insecurity or mood changes. Um, the downside is that you have an additional copper burden, but a low dose yeah. of 10 milligrams, 25 milligrams zinc picolinate, which you've been running for the last 10 years or so, um, or eight years that you had the copper IUD, that, that offsets it right away. So we my wife mentioned just in, as a public wife's... service announcement, yeah. if, if any people here have girlfriends that have the BRCA polymorphisms, those are the, mm -hmm. there are a group of uh, SNPs that are about 15 to 17 of them. 23andMe only covers about, and you should check it if you're a guy too. They're the major, major predictor of cancer in men and women. But if you, if you do have like, say over uh, 23andMe, probably genotypes about 60% of them, 70%. If you're carrying the polymorphisms and your homozygous or even not an over like six, seven of them, if I were a woman, I wouldn't take or a contraceptives because it's a major risk factor for breast cancer later in life. Yeah. Interestingly, mm -hmm. the risk of breast cancer declines if you lactate. I mean, uh, if you have children and you breastfeed, um, but so that really increases their risk. So it's, you're probably protecting your wife. It's great. No, for sure. I did a lot of research at that time when we decided on contraceptives and, um, no, the birth control is probably the worst or combination birth control pill is probably the worst option women have. And ideally you don't, of... get, you don't do anything, but of course you, you run the risk when you're sex sexually active and even on steroids, you can get your girlfriend pregnant, you know, it doesn't mm. induce spermatid or, um, I exospermia. Have um completely yeah. you know i'm, I'm st i still have semen when i when i'm on testosterone or primo same yeah, yeah. so Leo, the genetic analysis stuff we should revisit after the call off camera for yeah. talking about how we can get that finished because yeah, that's yeah. uh something i would love to help you know facilitate getting done because and i know it's going to be near impossible if we're both back on a regular posting schedule so yeah, we should talk is... about the whole editor thing and like, you know, the genetic analysis software and stuff like that. Cause a lot of people, by the way, for like a year, I don't know, even at this point sort of been like slowly, Leo's been slowly chipping away at creating a um, way to analyze your raw data from, you know, one of these genetic analysis companies, you get your genome, you can get essentially a big printout of all your different, uh, all the SNPs and whatnot that you could get manually identified for genetic predispositions and whatnot in a way that's way more useful than what 23andMe provides or any of these other companies that are just like, oh, you're 70% more likely to have like a fucking freckle or something like stuff we don't really care about as much as actual like disease and, you know, health optimization and stuff like that. And that's something I'm very much looking forward to promoting on the channel and, uh, you know, being able to offer as a high quality service. And hopefully we have our own genetic or the actual like sequencing kits where we can like get people's, you know, actually collect the DNA ourselves. And then we don't have to work through like 23 and me or something like that. But wow. yeah, we really shouldn't. To be honest, I was a little, I was disappointed in 23 and me the other day. I, my wife had told me that she saw that she had some, uh, she, she had uh, strong blondness. It was either blondness or skin color genetics. One of those two phenotypes. You know, 23andMe shows you some of your phenotypes and then it shows you some health risks. I yeah. imagine that at the very least, the blondness or skin color would be a really polygenic calculated thing. They used maybe 20 SNPs or 30 because... I don't know if you guys have been watching my videos recently, but I've been doing a lot of things about skin color and hair yeah. color and stuff like that, which I'm usually not that into. And when I went and saw the 23, it was literally one SNP. I was like, what? You, you're telling everybody based on one, there's 40? And it's, the papers are all out. I just don't get it. So it's it's not just them. It's Everybody's sort of like that. I don't really know why. I think in the future, there's going to be advanced modeling, software modeling, where yeah. you have the interactive effects of the different SNPs and stuff like that. But for now, just being comprehensive at the very least so people know. And, you know, at least because people don't realize they, they buy that 23andMe and they say, oh, I didn't get a warning about Alzheimer's. Well, they check only APOE4. That's one SNP. There's 30 oh, no. others you don't you don't know about that may really affect your health. And the funny thing is some people are thinking, no, they checked it for me already. So these things can be really valuable and also actionable, like we were talking about here with the Barca genes. You know? Yeah, but you do get the raw data, right, from 23andMe, so you can upload that somewhere else and have, well, have somebody yeah, else. Well, Prometheus download. has errors in it. Everyone uploads on Prometheus or self Prometheus has errors, self-decode, mm -hmm. the other option. 
is very uncomprehensive and not up to date. I'm, I, I check all these websites. Prometheus is not only incorrect in some parts, has errors, includes the wrong alleles, mistakes constantly. This is a free website that's that's related mm. to snpedia.com. Yeah, yeah. Snpedia doesn't have as many mistakes. I think people edit it as all, more often, but Prometheus or whatever it's called, the program, errors also biases unusual amount of for example crohn's disease variants people go whenever they go on prometheus they're like oh i have crohn's disease I, stuff i'm like I no they just manage, included that with, with the amount the, the the fastness at which new research is coming out you would need to have a whole team on top of that 24 they have, 7 just to they have they have thousands it. at 23 and me but they have thousands of employees including research scientists but mm. also they have uh you know suspicious things they do like for example if you go search online 23 and me employee uh whistleblower or something like that you'll find these old articles where 23 and me what they used to do is they take your genome right and so there's a way you can predict where your ancestry is from. Basically, what it means is this. You know, every time we mate with a person, we have what's called meiosis. We share, like at each single nucleotide, we take one alley from the father, one from the mother. So if you see large chunks of DNA that are intact, you think that someone shares an ancestry with a certain group, right? If, if me and you, Steve, had like one chunk of, of DNA that's big enough, mm -hmm. that's similar, we could think we can inherit it from the same person. So that's basically how the software programs tell you where you're from originally. But the problem is there's a lot of subjectiveness there, right? So there's an option to because you take a reference population, which is only mm -hmm. like something a thousand people. And so if you if depending on where you set the limit, you can see. So what they were doing was telling people that they were American Indian when they weren't telling them like they had interesting, you know, you have a little bit of African ancestry, you're a little bit of American and Indian, and it was, or Native American, sorry, and it, and it wasn't true. And there's one of the employees out of them. So there's a lot of, there's, you know, uh, even in the ancestry stuff, there's problems. I think we're still in our infancy, you know, when it comes to genetic analysis, and it, it's going to take another, right? And you, but we it's can actionable do it now. Yeah, it's actionable now, but yeah. there's still so much research that needs to be done. Still, say, same with the medical community. I mean, this, the new stuff that comes out and, and disproving old practices, it just changes all the time. So you really need to stay on top of it. And, and then, right, the, the main if, issue with if, the gen, genetic issues is that a lot, or the, the medical field, is that a lot of the overlap isn't analyzed. It's just one single subject, one single drug in a particular disease, which might overlap into another disease or, or a healthy individual, but that hasn't been examined. This exactly. Is... So if you're a determinist, if you believe the, f the future can be predicted, you're not like a quantum physics guy, you would imagine that one day, given all of the information about someone's environment and their whole genome, you could have a software that would predict the interactive effects of the environment and the genome and predict their diseases in the future. Hopefully one day that will happen to us. Should be able to read it and see exactly what they look like, at least. Yeah. Healthy. And uh, right. Exactly. So this is your body when it's absolutely healthy. And this is you, you're mad obese. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're doing something wrong that that would be great I interpret your genome and then i right, give you an ideal physique of what you should be looking like 